Let's welcome in our co-hosts on the day. New York Times best-selling author. He plays a mean game of musical chairs, <laughs> by the way, too, John Gilstrap. What the heck are you doing over there? The, <clears throat> the chairs here, the, the pneumatic thing that holds the chair up. Yeah keeps collapsing so by the time we get to the commercial break the, the table is going to be here i'm just going to get shorter and shorter and shorter does that does that, not, that doesn't happen to me well because you run the place and you get the good chair <laughs> have you <laughs> sat in this chair there's no padding left in this chair this is like sitting on plywood has phil mccoy's run uh, opening been running since monday no this is the first one for oh, okay yeah, I, it's very entertaining. I, <laughs> never, never ask not to have something. <laughs> We've had two wonderfully mixed, um, just mangled metaphors on this program. Phil had one, and Jason Baker had the other, <clears throat> which was, "Don't beat a dead horse." <laughs> and and the other one, I can't remember what the other one was, but it came. Oh, um, oh goodness, I, it, it just left my. Mine. It'll come back to me in a minute, right. but there, it was beautiful there. Let's also welcome in Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here, as yeah. always. Yeah, I, I have to I have to scour my brain because I had to think of this last night to tell my wife, too. And I'll remember it as the morning goes along. But it was very funny because he ended up saying something about not be, wanting to be a broken horse. Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, I don't want to be a broken record, and I don't want to beat a dead horse. And he came out and said, I don't want to be a broken horse. <laughs> well, that works. Great. That does. I mean, you don't want... <laughs> no, because they shoot broken horses. Yeah, yeah, the you glue factory. You don't want that One step all. away from the glue factory. Yeah. Hey, let's welcome in our first guest, Cade Miller. He's a former intern of this program. Uh, was excellent as an intern, too, I might add. Oh. And as a student at Penn State, just completed your junior year. That fast? That's right. Did you yeah. did you skip ahead a couple of years, or has it, it really been three years? It's been three years. Wow! Since you were an intern here, it's been three years. That That's went right. by like a minute. I know it did. It was it was fast. I don't remember much, but we <laughs> well, that was that was all the drinking we did. No, at six a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah at six a.m. in the morning. <laughs> it the morning martinis and all That's that right. good stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you're a Musselman High School graduate. Yeah, that's right. Ended up going to Penn State because um, that was my dream school. Um, broadcast journalism there was like second to none. Mm -hmm. um, the communication school was great, um, and then the atmosphere was also amazing. You've been to some home games? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't missed a football game yet, um, but it was super cool. And that's I don't know. I just like really fell in love with the campus and the atmosphere of like the students and uh, the major itself. What so. was uh, pandemic times like? at college for you well we just sat in our dorms and really didn't do anything else um we would so we graduated in 2020 and then we came onto campus and then we would just sit there you could go into other resident halls if you wanted people over in your dorm you had to all wear a mask and you could only have four people in so that means you and your roommate and then two other people could only come in your room um you didn't eat anywhere except your dorm, so you'd go get the food and you'd come back. And classes were all online as well, so you would just Zoom. Um, so I was there like in person, and I really didn't go to class, but I was like Zooming the classes. So you actually brought your food back to your room. Right. So how bad of a cockroach problem did you guys have? Oh my gosh. No, we had a wow. You had to okay. have had cockroaches. I lucked and out. And what did because... the dorm smell like? <laughs> <laughs> I lucked out. I was in the newest building, so. It was AC that you could control the best stuff, um, and then they would come take our trash every day. So that was nice. When did you get out of pandemic-like conditions? Um, I think so. the The fall semester of my sophomore year, after that, when we went home for winter break, we could take our masks off when we came back in the spring. Mm -hmm. well, that's so. Good. Yeah, like this so, year was normal. So let, let's uh, talk about the cost of college education because you right. turned in yesterday when we were having this discussion. Yeah. What does it cost for an out-of-state resident to go to Penn State? Too much. My next-door neighbor's kids go to Penn State, and she complains about that all the time. Yeah, and the so Penn State has all the Commonwealth campuses, so all the ones that are around the area, and then Mont Alto is the closest one to us. If a student from Berkeley County, or really any county in West Virginia or Maryland, kind of like in this area, they um, will get in-state tuition because they work by satellite district rather than um, like in-state mm -hmm. or not. So that's the nice thing about Commonwealth campuses. However, I go to University Park, which is right smack in the middle. Um, and that our tuition is actually going up. That's this main, year. your main campus, right? Yeah. yeah. And our tuition's going up right now. Um, the student or the 
Board of Trustees is voting on that in June, and they're going to vote yes, um, because Penn State's really in debt right now. Um, but they are, like, cleansing our entire financial situation. So it's going up, I think, by 2 or 3%. Um, any, so yeah. any idea what you might be paying next year? No clue. No clue. What is it? What are you paying now for room and board and tuition and all that good stuff? Um, I would say like twenty eight, thirty thousand per, per semester. Yes, yes, per year. Year per year. Sorry, I know it's significantly more than that if you're out of state. If you get in the out of state rate, it's right. You're in the fifties. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't but know. For it's a too state much, school. Like. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. It's too much. But then again, it is a um, it is a state fund school so obviously like they're going to you know try to make it cheaper but since like the whole mission is like to make in-state students have a well like a great time and just have easy financial situations when they go into college and higher education so i mean Penn pennsylvania's like priority isn't out of state students correct and they don't have to have a um like a quota of any out of state students. I worked for admissions this year and I was like curious about that. And I asked how many people at University Park go, uh, are from West Virginia, and they only said three. So really, there's not that many, three? but there's 13 in all of Penn State. So including the Commonwealth campuses. So that could be Altoona or Mont Alto or Harrisburg. So there's 13. 13 total West Virginians in all the Pennsylvania State University system? That's right. Yeah. So. So you're pretty unique. Hey, you know. You're one of three on the main campus. Maybe. But I am, yeah. So that's cool. And I did meet one my freshman year. I met one kid from West Virginia. He's from Morgantown. And guess what his name was? Cade. That's right. <laughs> Isn't that wild? That's the only Cade I've met at Penn State. That's amazing. So, from so I, I looked it up, and it says non-PA resident, 38,000 tuition. 30, tuition. No. That's, that's an estimate. That's just tuition, though. Yeah. Now you well, that, your includes, dorm. that includes... Um, that doesn't include your. That doesn't dorms. include travel, personal expenses, books, and supplies. I think it might include uh, room and board estimates, and then so PA residents nineteen thousand. Because I, I know my neighbor's paying a lot more than thirty eight. Yeah, she tells me every time she sees me. I don't know. Can I like? I don't know if I can say that on air. I don't know. You can say what? Like the what tuition. Like yeah, you can. It's, it's, it's not, public it's, knowledge, Kate. I know, but like it's just like. No, it's not like anything. It's public knowledge. Well, it's like fifty. Yeah, yeah. That's what. That's the figure that I'm hearing from my neighbor. You're welcome. There you go, Rob. Well, I'm glad your neighbor said it first. So yeah. not me. It's not a secret. Okay, good. Well, there you go. They so, have to tell people. Yeah. Even private schools have to tell people. Do they? Yeah, I didn't know that. You have, yeah, when you're charging somebody money, you got to tell them that's how much true. it is. That's true. Yeah. What are you studying? Broadcast journalism. And how are you doing there? Um, good. I have two radio shows. Um, one is on Com Radio, which is an internet radio station, so you have to like go online and log in. And the other one's an FM radio, so it's the Lion FM. Um, and I do Cade's Country Corner, which is a uh, an hour or a thirty minute or an hour long show when I just like DJ music and host, and um, so that's like always fun. And that's like pretty much what I do in the radio and side. I do a or I do a podcast for admissions. Um, I interview students within the College of Com and just talk about that. Uh, we also did a big podcast this year on Franco Harris, mm -hmm. which was super cool. Because he died. Uh, he did. Yeah. He died like two days before like his like big reunion event. So that was mm -hmm. that was cool. I got to interview one of his like best friends um, that he met in 2007 through golf. Um, he's a big philanthropist, which was cool. But um, so I did that. I'm also a tour guide through Line Ambassadors, and I still work for the student government. How did your Berkeley County education prepare you for life in college? Um, I would say the best thing I ever did was the dual enrollment. So the first year when I was a senior, that was the first year that Shepherd and all the Berkeley County schools like combined and did the dual enrollment thing. That was the best thing I've ever did. I got to like have a real experience with college. Um, while the professors also knew I was in high school, so like I was doing the high school sports and things like that, but then I would also go to Shepherd and like have English, math, and psychology, and I think that was like so helpful because I got to write a real college paper, um, and I got all my math credits out of the way. So I haven't done math at Penn State yet. 
Um, so don't ask me to do any math. Um, is that in your future? No, nope. So that's good. Um, but really all I do is just English for the rest in comm classes for the rest of college. And I'm taking golf next semester, which is going to be fun. Um, but I'd say Berkeley County did really well, uh, with a dual enrollment, um, things like that. And like looking back, I was looking back at like the options that Berkeley County schools gave us, even mm -hmm. from like talking to my friends who are from Pennsylvania, the ability to go to like Blue Ridge or to James Rumsey Technical Institute, like those are just like awesome opportunities that not everybody has even heard about um, where like in state college. So I think those are like just great options that Berkeley County has really given students. Mr. Gilstrap. You're studying broadcast journalism, but the radio and the podcast you're doing sort of skew more toward the entertainment side of, of things. Yes. Do you do you take courses that are journalism as a... Oh, yeah. And is that part of your future, do you see? Do you well, think? well, I don't know. So my major is primarily, like, we don't focus on entertainment at all. Um, so I've done news writing, TV, like, story writing, and then radio reporting. Um, and I like... The, I like radio, obviously, the most, um, but I, I I don't know. Like, the news is, like, fine to me, but I love, like, in-depth stories like we do with the podcasting. Um, like, I don't know if you all listen to podcasts, but This American Life from WBEZ Chicago is, like, one of the best storytelling podcasts in the nation. Um, it, like, they just follow you around with a microphone and do these in-depth stories that I just absolutely love, like, being able to like set an atmosphere or set an environment up through audio is so cool. Um, and Penn State has kind of taught us to do that. Um, I took the podcasting class um, and that's what the Harris or the Franco Harris podcast was through. Um, so it was like, I think that was like my favorite thing. Um, and then I'm this year I'm interning at in DC for Sirius XM. Um, there is a podcasting uh, department, but I'm not in that. I'm in the music programming, so I'm like in the entertainment side still. Um, but yeah, so I do a lot of journalism through classes, um, like Com Radio. I've done a few news stories, but not much. Um, I typically do like entertainment reviewing and reviewing for TV and movies. So like, not like important things for the world, <laughs> like news, but um, still fun for me. Do you write to a time slot? When, when, when you start to do a, a news story, I ask Rob this too, but do you know that you've got 43 seconds and you therefore have to write 43 seconds of copy or do you fix that in post? Um, well, typically the stories that I've done have been either like you get a time of a minute or two minutes um, and then it's on, it's the producer's side to like pretty much time out how much they're going to say or even cut stories or do a longer intro. Um, so really, like when I, I aim for like a minute 45 and then during uh, editing and things like that, that's when I'll try to get it right on the dot. Um, and I mean, they always say you can be like two seconds or more or less, um, but I try to get it right on the dot. Um, but yeah, so I would say most of it goes through editing obviously just because you're sitting there in the in the room trying to figure out what you're going to say and make it look good or sound good um but i'd say most of that goes through the editing part you do that in your dorm with your own software or is is there a studio um so my podcasting stuff i've done on my in my like on my computer and stuff but we have this new we have a 40 million dollar new media center that opened last year we have radio stations, like podcasting rooms, editing rooms, um, and we get Adobe for free. So pretty much I'm just always in the media center editing that kind of stuff. Um, so editing's my favorite part. I think that's like so cool. Um, just being able to I like, remember you used out. to be very interested in the editing we yes, used to do here. I loved that part. Um, <laughs> and I did like, my podcasting professor loved the editing that I did. Um, just kind of like throwing in music and just, um, kind of like giving it time to breathe and things like that. So mm -hmm. that's like my favorite part. So I do spend a lot of time editing and I also love helping other people. Like I remember somebody in my class was just like, I have no idea how to edit this. And I basically sat there and like, was like, okay, you need this. Cause this looks pretty freaking cool. Um, so editing is my favorite part. Are you doing and, video and audio? 
Um, I'm really bad at video, like horrible. Um, that's like, <laughs> there's like two different, so Adobe Audition is just for music or audio, and then Adobe Premiere is for visual and audio. And I have no idea how to work like video pretty much. I cannot do fade in and fade out. I am just on the struggle bus when I'm working Adobe Premiere. However, YouTube is the best thing, and you told me that too. Um, if you ever get confused when you're working with that stuff, just YouTube it, because mm -hmm. somebody else has done it. There's That's true of anything there, in the world. Yep. That's right. There is a YouTube video for it. That's right. Yeah. So, um, but Adobe, that's what I work with, and Sirius, that's what I'll be working with too. Um, so yeah. And you are you have just completed your junior year. Are you getting out in time? Four years. Yes, I will be graduating next year after my senior year. What do you hope to do when you graduate? Well, I really hope that Sirius asks me back, um, but we'll see. I haven't even started. Um, but we're going, we're going to DC today to look for housing um, for the summer. And that's I, what, that's what college has prepared you for that sticker shock. Oh my gosh. This like, <laughs> like I remember in state college is really bad. And I'm pretty sure Morgantown is also bad with housing. When I move in, in September, I have to sign a lease for the next year for housing. It doesn't matter if it's in a dorm or it doesn't matter if it's off campus in an apartment or in a house. That's the worst thing ever. And then I realized, like, when you go out into the real world, like, nobody's, like, pressuring you to, like, oh, my gosh, you have to sign right now or, like, you won't get the house. And so that's, like, that's kind of the crazy part about living. So, but intern housing is also horrible just in D.C. because nobody wants to sign anybody for a lease for just three months. Sure. Um, so that's pretty wild. So I'm trying to live with Howard University um, and their dorms. Um, fingers crossed it works out today. Um, but yeah, so then after, hopefully Sirius asked me back. Okay, SNL is kind of out of the way, Rob. You're not gonna happen now? Yeah, um, we, so Don Roy King, the director for SNL, I was talking to him and he was like, I don't think you should work or intern for SNL because they hide you in the basement as an intern. So I was like, oh, I guess I won't be doing that. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I feel like throughout like college, radio has been my thing. I haven't really done much with TV other than the classes that are required. Um, so I think that radio is probably where I'm going to stay. Well, welcome to the world of radio, man. Yes. Yeah. Brothers in arms. That's right. <laughs> it's fun. It's early. Ask Colin. Yeah. <laughs> Colin just he just lifted his head up to peak above the bunker in there. Kate Miller is our guest, former intern here on this program, and now a student at uh, Penn State. So when you get out of college, are you going to have debt? Um, I am blessed to not have debt. I will not be having any debt. So. Talk to me about the kids you go to school with and how concerned they are about student loans and debt that they're racking up. Um, so most of my friends who are in Pennsylvania – are from or have like huge scholarships so i know a lot of people in the communication school that are going that are paying like six thousand dollars a year that's, so that's like their in-state school yeah um so it's like us and wvu um so that's like really nice um and people had our that are out of state most of the people out of state are actually from jersey um but from what I'm aware of, most people are also blessed to not have any loans coming out or in debt. Um, but there are, I work with the student government, so a lot of stuff that we work with is like student poverty and things like that. Um, so that's like pretty big. There's not much that the student government can do on behalf of tuition, but I do know that that's a pretty significant thing. I know my friend, she is, um, she has no opportunity to pay for college. So she was going to be in debt. So she does that year, that program where the government will pay for her entire like tuition if she works for them for eight years. So right after this, she's working for the State Department mm -hmm. um, and for like cybersecurity. So that's like a big, I know a lot of people that are doing that, especially like in student government, but um, that's like a big option. So like the people that are, were, probably going to go into debt they're trying to look for these big scholarships that like kind of like sign away for like the first couple of years after college but then after that she's like free to go mm -hmm. so that's pretty nice what's on the minds of most of the college kids that you're talking about now who are similar situation like you where they're close to graduating not quite there yet but about to enter the real world yeah i don't i don't want to graduate of course um because like state college is my home but 
I you can always torpedo the academics. You don't have to graduate. Right, right. So. right. And I don't think that's a good option um, for me, though. But um, I, I'm only taking seven point five credits for the rest of college, so I'm a part time student technically. Um, Why is that? Uh, because I I should have graduated this this junior year. Um, if I didn't have, I only needed four more classes technically, so I could have squeezed it in throughout my time. Because of dual enrollment, that was like... So you had a lot of credits from high school that carried over. Yes, I got 27 credits. Wow. Oh, that's almost a full year. So that's, that, and that was all for Shepard. So yeah. that was super nice. Um, and they counted all of them? They counted all of them. That's great. That was... they. I was really lucky because Penn State worked with me really hard. I also called every day, so they were going to hear from me. But Shepard <laughs> also worked I, really hard. I believe hard. that, kid. And I know that my sister did the dual enrollment um, this year as well. We, we had your sister on the program. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and she did the dual enrollment as well. And one of the big like advertisements they do for dual enrollment for the high school students is that their credits transfer. And they always say, we had a student that went to Penn State and all his credits transferred. So like that's a great opportunity. Um, but where were we? <laughs> I forget. I was going on a rant again. But in, in terms of kids graduating oh, yeah. and what they're thinking about the world right now. Yeah. Um, I was talking to my friend about this, that people are like, I, I've, I'm not like too afraid to go out into the real world. Um, and I think it's because when we were in COVID, we kind of sat at home and we graduated during 2020. And then as soon as like COVID was ended, like was like pretty much masks were off. I was a sophomore in college. So like, I was just kind of like thrown into like staying at home 24 seven to just being in a dorm room with strangers and like working on my academics. So I think that like my like kind of generation of college students are just like, they're okay with going out into the real world. They're not like too scared as like other classes might be just because we were used to being thrown right into something new um, instantly with COVID. Um, so I think, I think that's like, I'm not like too afraid. I just don't want to leave like my friends mm -hmm. and kind of like the area of state college because that's what I've, been used to for four years um but i think i think COVID has done that little difference of we're not afraid to go out anymore to like mr harvey change the atmosphere do you and colin have a, a bet going for september 2nd with the wvu and oh my gosh penn state i well, think i think the losers should have to do something embarrassing well the there's no bet needed <laughs> Because we know. Wow. Well, we know no I, think, I think I'm rooting for Colin on this one. Oh, my gosh. Well, all my friends from WVU are coming up. So it is going to be fun. Um, I'm super excited for that game. That's like that's like all my friends from uh, from school know. Well, we should, we should be clear. WVU and Penn State play yes, for the sorry. first time in a long time yes. on September 2nd. That's right. At Penn at, State. At Penn State, yes. Which is about the same drive from here as it is yeah. to Morgantown. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, it's going to be a bit a different world for those Mountaineers because it's they're playing in the second largest stadium in the country, and how, all three of those well, West how, Virginia students. <laughs> that's right. We will be crazy. I mean, have you been to a uh, you've been to a game in Morgantown? Yeah. So how's it different? Um, I about forty thousand people. Right. Yeah. So it's it's at least right. At least, yeah. How many is one hundred eight hundred? Which who, who's the biggest? I've been to Tennessee, uh, uh, Michigan, Michigan, but biggest, we're right? surpassing it in two years. So. That's cool. Penn State has one of the ugliest stadiums. Okay, you say this every time. In the history of college football. I've never football. been. I was thinking about going. It, it, at first, you see the, it on TV, and it looks you know like a college. But you look at it from the outside, and because it was built and then expanded and then expanded and then added onto, it looks like a kid with an erector set put yeah. together a stadium, and then his older brother came along and put more stuff on top of it. And then another brother came along and added something on. It It makes little sense when you look at it, and it is an eyesore as you walk by it. Well, I mean, inside it looks beautiful. You know? it, don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'll, I'll do respect but to the success and history of the look, program, but it is not an attractive stadium. It does look like they had, you know, some, like, press box that they just put on stilts. Yes. And then they added a Because they literally more. did jack up the because stadium back in the 70s or 80s to add <laughs> on to right. it. They literally did put it on hydraulic jacks and That's pick right. it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. But... Um, yeah, so we're playing. So that's like, I, I don't know. The student section is like, that's the big difference. In Morgantown, they have that, like one area, it's kind of on the side, but we, we put our students right up front and you're going to look at them. So <laughs> like, as it's the- You should um, for $50,000 a year. That's right. It's the south end zone. Um, that's where, 
that's where we put all the students. So it's it's just massive. All right. So has has the Penn State community on campus moved past Joe Paul yet? Okay. So I would say, I don't know. So at the time when Joe Paul was happening, all the students were like mad and angry, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. It's not like even a concern right now with like my classmates. Has he so. talked about it anymore? Not really. I mean, I mean, I like work for like. Line ambassadors, which are like the tradition keepers of campus, kind of. So, like, we like obviously know about all that stuff, and like people on tours will be like, "Oh, where, what, like, why is your library named after the Paternos?" And we're like, "Well, they paid for it. He, they paid for it." And Sue Paterno is also like super active in the Penn State community still, and their sons are on the board of trustees, so they still have like a a grasp on the Penn State area, but. Um, it's not like even, it's not even a big concern of ours. Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, how it happened in 2011 and I'm 21 now. So yeah, that's like, it was so long ago. I was like a kid. I didn't even remember. Well, I bring happening. up Joe Paul obviously was an icon, not right. just at Penn state, but in college football right? until the, you know, the kingdom fell. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but I ask you that because it's kind of timely in that Bob Huggins now is on the hot seat. Mm. And Bob Huggins is an icon in West Virginia. Right. And it will be, it's going to be interesting to me, not that you can compare the two, yeah. uh, but it's going to be interesting to me to see all the people who criticized all the Penn State folks for worshiping an icon and, and sticking with that icon, regardless of what happened around them, that's right. What their reaction is to Huggins. Because I'm already hearing people go, well, it wasn't that big of a deal. Right. It wasn't that, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, yeah. you, you know it, it, he really shouldn't be punished at all or just a little one. Right. So, But a lot of those same people were jumping all over the Penn State, yeah. folks. Oh, my friends are still like, what happened in 2011 with Penn State? Like when mm-hmm. I start chipping, you know. Um, so then, I mean, I, that's a good comeback for me. So I'm like, you know. But... Um, yeah, I think over the years it's kind of it's calmed down. Like nobody talks about it, but at the time it was like full on riots. Oh yeah, it was like Jopa was he was the father of Penn State and everybody loved him. He was there was like the Pope, your favorite saint, and then Joe Paterno if you That's were right. if you were in uh, State College, yeah, and, and, or a Penn State I mean, graduate. He was, he was also like a great like the Paternos are just great people all together. Um, the dude had a solid rep before that whole thing went oh, down. Oh yeah, they do. And I, I still love, I have met Sue Paterno multiple times and she is so sweet. And we did this one event where, um, like, it's just like a big tradition for Lion Ambassadors and she comes out and speaks every year. Um, and I remember like our job was to get her onto the field and then like kind of surround her, like the bodyguards and then like walk her off so mm-hmm. like, nobody could like come up and somebody was like, could we get a selfie? And then I remember somebody was like, oh no, I'm sorry. She's walking back. And she turned around. She's like, I never say no to a, a selfie. And so she took the selfie and then she walked away and she was like, I'm sorry. Like we have to keep up this good face. You know what I mean? And so like, it's like, I don't know. It's, All right. What's, what is Cade Miller's sad. advice to seniors in college right now who are about to gra- se- sorry, seniors in high school right now who are about to graduate and move on to a college experience? Yeah. Um, what, what do you know now? You didn't know then. Oh my gosh. Oh, gosh. Everybody, okay, first year, everybody's awkward, and nobody has friends, so just go out and talk to people. Like, come on. Nobody, and also, like, your first year, you're not going to, you're going to meet a lot of people, but you're not probably going to stay their friends. Um, So I'd say just talk to everybody your first year, because um, it's their first time. Everyone's living by themselves. They're no longer with mom and dad, um, and everyone is just rooming with this new roommate that they probably don't really know that well. So just... Just talk to everybody on your floor, in your classes, because you may think it's weird. And there's that like weird stigma in high school that if you talk to the person beside you, you're weird. Um, but don't do that in college because you're going to be the weird one if you're quiet. Um, but yeah, I would say talk to everybody and join as many clubs as possible. Cade, where do you get the energy that you have? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> Penn State. I know you had it when you were at Musselman High School, too. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Well, good to talk with you. Well, thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, have a great, <laughs> astonishing have amount a great of energy. Show. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's an amazing yeah. amount of energy. Who's your favorite teacher at Mosma? <clears throat> oh, um, Miss Branch or Miss Patero. Yeah. 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 Those are my favorite leadership and math. So, math? I thought you said you don't go anywhere near math oh, in college. Well, <laughs> yeah. That was high school, you know? <laughs> 
She, she so does, well. she doesn't need to. <laughs> These are good in high school. Hey, good to catch up with you, hey, Kate. Thank you for having me. When do you go back? Um, I go back in August. All right, what are you yeah. doing for the summer? Sirius XM. Oh, that's the right. Internship. Internship. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look up Flash Phelps. Flash Phelps. Yeah. Will do. All right. Who's that? He's 60s at 6. Oh. 60s radio. Oh, I work for Prime Country. Yeah. So tune into that. Or the Bluegrass Station. Are you going to do anything on the air? No, I'm I'm a hostless station. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. All the best to you, dude. Thank you.